Good morning. Welcome back to another week of Midwest Whitetail. It is Sunday, October 16th, and Ryan and I are set up down at the River Bottom Farm. We're in the pinch. It's my first morning sit of the year. We're having a great sit so far. Really nice conditions. We've got a high pressure morning. It's northwest wind. It's about 40 degrees. It feels great for October 16th. Seen a few does and three or four bucks. Uh, one nice buck so far, four or five year old 10 point that came into 20 yards. I'm waiting on Kelsey. He's my target for the year. He worked through here yesterday morning. And so with any luck, he'll show up yet this morning. On today's show, we're gonna join Matt Tatey. He caught up with a great buck on October 8th. He capitalized on that same cold front that I was able to. It's a buck he's got a lot of history with, a deer he called Tokyo. It's a pretty cool hunt. Hope you guys enjoy it. October 8th here, um, the first really major cold front in October here. We had one during youth season that got them up on their feet, but um, 30 degrees here this morning at, at most. And uh, we're tucked back in here in what we call the big timber. Um, we have uh, bedding to our northeast. We got a slight west wind. Um, and this is really the area that um, I missed uh, little Louie last year, but we saw Tokyo in here. We've seen him three times the last couple years. This is where he likes to go. Um, he's got he's got that flyer kicking off him this year, so it's really fun to hear. Plus, you kind of never know what might show up back in here, but he he loves this area. Um, it was a week later last year when I saw him, um, and then I missed Louie, but um, we uh, can't can't pass up a morning to get out during 30 degrees. So, um, really excited to hunt him, but just more importantly, just get out and enjoy God's creation. So 
we're gonna just sit tight here for a little bit. It's gonna take a little bit probably for them to get back in here, but um, yeah, we'll just we'll have to see what happens. But really, Tokyo is our number one, along with what we call the old Ted, and he's been showing up more on the south side of the farm with another buck that's got um, long threes. So we'll call him Long Three, I think. So other than that, can't ask for a better morning. It is super calm, 30 degrees, about a three to four mile an hour wind, but we're pretty jacked up. exactly where Tokyo has been living his whole life and I just sat down I mean we made small talk for a while I mean first <laughs> and then he came from he came from the uh, he came from the southeast um, and he snuck in right behind us all I could turn around to see him and I looked and I saw the flyer and it was him it was him and um, he spotted us moving and then took about 20 yards worth of jump and I put it right on him. My strap, my strap was catching me. I couldn't quite get as far as I wanted. And I knew that he was gonna take off and so um, I got it. He was slightly quartering away. So, I mean, I'm mid body forward for sure. I mean, it's a dead deer. He just didn't tip over like I was hoping he would right there. So, um, I, I, don't, I don't know what to say. I mean, I just slowly turned. I mean, I just got up and shot. That's all I know. <laughs> oh my gosh. Holy smokes. Well, it's about little after 10 here um, we went over to Max's and um, the good news is is that the deer meal kicked um, there's actually quite a bit of blood pumping out the side uh, bad news is it is still middle back so we just we're just gonna back out uh, we're gonna go home we're gonna take a nap or we're gonna wait give him about eight hours total um, if it's dead if the deer's dead now uh, it's gonna be dead later so uh, it's the right thing to do kind of turns my stomach a little bit but um, We'll, we'll come back the, this afternoon and, and uh, get our get our families and see if we can uh, track it and, and find this to you this afternoon. So it's going to be a long wait, but um, we'll catch back up with you this afternoon here. Well, folks, uh, we are about eight and a half hours um, past when we shot the deer. So made it down, brought uh, two of our kids with us and uh, get some extra set of eyes on here. But getting anxious, really nervous. Um, I think we're okay, but at the same time, like... You never know. So we're going to ease in here. I'll, I'll knock an arrow and, and we'll go back and see if we can find some blood. Should be able to find some based on what we saw on camera. Um, so that's what has us optimistic. Um, I think the biggest thing is, is like, yeah, I hope I find him, but I just didn't want, you know, don't want that deer to suffer whenever possible. And I replay that in my mind. I got the shot off pretty quickly and thinking he was going to jump out of there and obviously made a lethal hit, I think. But um, replaying that in my head, I wish I would have taken just a little bit more time and, and just moved that pin a little bit farther to the left and I think we would have been fine and had a deer at home already. So that being said, uh, those are all good lessons learned. I hope that uh, somebody out there can possibly learn the same lesson at some point. So, um, but here we go. Let's go see if we can find it.
Oh my goodness. Oh man. What has he got? He's so fat. Yeah, that's a big buck. Let's look at that thing, man. Look at that. <laughs> look at the velvet hanging off. Well, um, as I said in our opening interview, we definitely uh, don't have to quit hunting. So we, uh, the, the chilly morning, 30 degree morning provided. Um, although I was joking around and this was a really quick hunt, um, we do have quite a bit of history with this buck that we call Tokyo. Um, two years ago, Caleb and I were hunting in that very same area, except it was an opposite wind and we sat on the opposite side of that little funnel. And um, a buck that we had camera pictures of, his, his brow tines really curved out at the time and so we called him Tokyo, like they were radars. And we had a really good encounter, almost got a shot at him. We believed him to be four years old at that point. He might have been three. Fast forward to a year later, he was on the tops of the list and uh, Maddox and I actually had an encounter with him in November, but the very first sit in late October, um, he was the very first deer that I saw back in that area again. Um, but we knew he made it through and we knew exactly where he lived and, and lo and behold, this buck showed up this year with a big flyer on his, on his uh, G2 and wasn't sure exactly what deer it was because he, he, he grew uh, these eye guards and a flyer on there and then I kind of studied the, the G3 and the shape of his brow tines and sure enough I, I compared photos from last year to this year and it's definitely Tokyo and man he's got a heck of a left main beam on him and he's, he's probably five or six we don't know exactly the age on him yet I have to look at the teeth but regardless um, this morning we got back in there I told Matt we were joking around it was just cold front and I'm like He's probably gonna be the first deer that shows up and um, this is exactly where he goes and we had a slight west wind and Matt was actually taking some cutaways of my bow and he turns and says, big buck, 20 yards, big buck, 20 yards. And so I sat there and sat there and grabbed my bow. Um, Matt tried to just grab the, the small camera and get whatever footage that we could and, and sure enough, he got a little bit of footage of him kind of jumping away and walking away from us and then he hit record again and got him as he was bounding away. We thought the game was over. As soon as he bounded away and kind of looked up and caught wind of us and smelled us, drew my bow and uh, shot pretty quick and ended up shooting him a little bit far back and got, got some of the guts in there, but we did catch the lung and um, also the liver. So couldn't be more delighted. Uh, great team effort. Having Matt out here filming this morning, having the boys help find him, and of course uh, my, my hunting partner Caleb and all the encounters we've had with him. Uh, the landowner who lets us hunt, but yeah, what a story, uh, what a buck, and um, so thankful to be sitting behind uh, a buck we call uh, Tokyo. So my job here to hop behind the camera and film a bunch of people here the rest of this year, but uh, couldn't be more tickled and more pleased uh, to be sitting behind this deer. So uh, thanks for watching Outreach Outdoors on Midwest Whitetail. Congrats to Matt on a great buck. It's about 10.45 here, and uh, the activity's really slowed down since about 9.15, so we're gonna call it a morning. The pre-rut activity is really starting to pick up on the cutty backs. It's uh, getting pretty exciting. We're getting lots of scrape activity, particularly with this last cold front and also some bucks kind of sparring and locking up on camera. My vacation starts next week, so we're gonna start hitting it pretty hard after October 22nd or so. Uh, excited to start the grind. Otherwise, between now and then, I'm gonna stay focused on does and kind of picking my spots to provide myself opportunities at Kelsey if the weather's right. Hope you guys enjoyed the show, and we'll see you back next week.